Welcome to another edition of John's Films. Today we're going to look at the differences between DaVinci Resolve Free and Studio Edition. Here in the free version you see the project manager is quite simple and it's because it doesn't share, like this one does here in Studio, across uh, project servers so you can't collaborate with other users on your projects at the same time. As we come into the free version though, checking into it, you can see it does use your 3D accelerated external GPU, but it does not, as you see here in studio, enable SLI mode if you've got multiple external GPUs. Now, as I was going through this, I was thinking, hi, I wonder if it hit the 3D titles. And so I threw a couple titles on the timeline, and sure enough, here we go. We've got 3D titles in our free edition, so you'd be able to title your footage after you cut it up. And I thought, well, maybe not 3D, 3D moving titles. So I threw one of those on the timeline here. And you'll see the text and the rotation here works perfectly. So I throw it in, and you're able to edit the colors. You can edit a lot of the different attributes about this. So I said, OK, well, I know there's some effects that are different. So here I've got some footage that is a little hazy. And I thought, oh, that's nice. I know what I can use here in the free edition. I wonder if the dehaze GPU accelerated effect works. and the answer is no, and we can see it now gives us a definition around what is limited. So I wonder what it would look like if I, oh wait, there we go. So now it'll show you, but it will put a watermark over your footage. So you can at least see what the difference is and see what you might be aiming for if you were to try and replicate that through use of the color wheels, contrast, etc. I tried some other effects here and several of them worked. So it's not a wholesale nothing works. Um, I noticed some of the color correction tools were blocked out like this, but a lot of the Gaussian blur, some of the other effects. Now there's some new effects that DaVinci has in the Studio Edition that have to do with uh, beautifying your subjects. If you've got people in there, uh, they will do some facial reconstruction if you want to make somebody's jaw bigger, smaller, eyes narrower for a mean scene. You've got a lot of freedom in that Studio version that doesn't exist here in the Free Edition. Another option here is our noise reduction, but the second I try and apply that noise reduction, you run into the same studio limitation, and that's across both temporal and spatial noise reduction. I can color correct as I want to. I can even go into my calibration and set my levels against a color card if I want to, um, but once I get into very specific color spaces, I run into some problems. Next, I figured surely they couldn't enable stabilization, so I turned it on, ran a stabilization, and sure enough, it stabilized my footage in the free version. So then I said, well, trackers, aha, let me put a power window in and track a point. Wait, nope, that worked too. Then I assumed that DaVinci Fusion, or, or the new Fusion integration into DaVinci, wouldn't work. So I created some particles, sure enough, they pop up just fine, and then I thought, well, what about on a 3D plane? So here we are with them masked by text, and now to get into the 3D work, I decided, well, I'll just create a simple box. And let's rotate the camera around the box with some simple keyframing. And here we go, rotating it around. And you can see it does. It renders. And you can even put 3D uh, title screens over the top of it. All the generators appear to work. Everything seems to work the same until you get into the delivery tab. And here, the options are quite limited. Uh, if you're looking for anything bigger than a 4K UHD, so if you want 4K DCI output, if you're looking for very specific and granular control over the quality of your output, here in the studio version I have a lot more options all the way up to 8K renders, and I have a here uh, an encoder option for NVIDIA, which is brand new, and I don't have uh, great metrics on it yet, but I'm going to be trying it across the SLI 1080s I've got in this. The last thing to keep in mind is Blackmagic Design doesn't get any money if you don't support them, and they continue to make better versions. So you can see Simba here is really happy with the choice of the Studio Edition. So which of these really matter? As I look at the common features, I think you have a complete nonlinear editor at your fingertips, where you're going to notice that you don't have the Studio version. For most users, I think it's probably when you get into noise reduction and some of those effects. Otherwise, I don't anticipate many of the users will be using the HDR color space, will be deinterlacing video, have an SLI or Crossfire rig to edit on, or have shot any footage greater than 4K that they need to render to. Finally, virtual reality, 3D stereoscopic, 
and those collaboration features for large teams doing editing. The last thing I don't think you'll miss will be the perpetual license fee coming from Adobe Premiere. And I think you've got a solid tool no matter which of these two options you go with. So support Blackmagic Design if you can with the studio version, but I think you'll get by just fine with free. Thanks for watching.